بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Help notes for a new Arabic grammar by Nahmed and Haywood First exercise, exercise number one uh, Question number one These are translations from Arabic to English Our first sentence is أنا صغير وأنت كبير So, first thing to do is identify the sentence structures inside here So, أنا صغير is one sentence And there is a second sentence أنت كبير and work, consider that as a joining word. Then let's look at each one of these sentences. <coughs> the first sentence begins with Anna, and remember Anna is a pronoun, and all pronouns are nouns, and therefore this must be a noun sentence, Al Jumla Al Ismiya. Likewise, in the second sentence, you begin with Anta. Anta is a pronoun, and therefore it is a noun, and therefore this is Al Jumla Al Ismiya. Remember, Al Jumla al Ismiya start with nouns. If any sentence starts with a noun, it is automatically a noun sentence. Is what I've called an A is B sentence. So we need to then identify the parts inside each sentence. What is the subject and what are, what is being said about the subject? So the subject here is Anna, the I, and what is being said about them is Sagir. How can we tell that this is the subject and this is the predicate? This is the uh, Al-Mubtada and this is the Khabar Well you use a m multiple set of clues The first thing you utilize is uh, the meanings of the words I, small So obviously the small is talking about I That's the first clue The second clue is we're going from a definite word to an indefinite word The Mubtada is most uh, usually definite And all pronouns are definite So Ana and Anta are definite and Sagirun has a tanween at the end. <coughs> Remember, it's that Dhamma written with a little flick at the end. That makes it indefinite. So the transition from definite to indefinite marks the point of the transition from the Al-Mubtada, the subject, to the Khabar, the predicate. Likewise, the exact same thing applies here. So once we've identified the different parts of the sentence, we can then go ahead and translate. Ana and between the al-mubtada and the khabar we're going to put an am which is the verb to be in English because I we can't we don't say I is we say I am and that's understood in this uh, type of sentence I am sagirun a small it's an indefinite word so we put the a wa is and anta is you are again because we're going from the mubtada to the khabar anta to kabir so we put in between the r kabirun is a big and then we're going to get rid of the extra articles because we don't really use them in English. I am, cross off the A, I am small, and you are, cross off the A, big. So we end up with, I am small and you are big. Let's go to the next one. Anta rajulun tawilun. Again, first step, identify the sentence. The sentence starts at anta and it, you can think of it, uh, uh, it ends at the end of tawilun. Where is the mubtada, where is the khabar? Rajulun Tawilun is a group of words. The word Tawil is describing the word Rajul. So Rajul is a described word, <coughs> Mausuf, and Tawil is a describing word, i.e. Uh, as sifa So these two, we can bracket them and almost think of them as a single word. So that entire thing can act as the Khabar, okay, as the predicate of this sentence. Um, this is a sentence, it starts with a noun, so it must be a noun sentence. Al-Jumla Al-Ismiya. Anta is a pronoun, and all pronouns are nouns. So, the Mubtada is Anta, and the Khabar is Rajulun Tawilun. So, let's now break this down. So, Anta is you, we're going to put the R in between. You are Rajul, a man, Tawil, a tall. And then we're going to just correct the word order. So, you are, and again, Remember these brackets telling us this is almost like a single word. A tall, a man. In English, we put the man at the end. So we get, you are a tall man. Anta rajulun tawil. You are a tall man. Question number 1.3. Ashari'u wasi'un wa tawilun. Again, first step, identify the type of sentence we're talking about and where the sentence starts and where the sentence ends. To make this simple, I've just extended this line to cover the entire thing to say that's one sentence. Purists might say that the sentence actually stops here and this is a second sentence, but we won't worry about that. A shari' is a, a noun. How can we tell? Well, even if you didn't know what the word meant, uh, you can tell it's a noun because it's got alif lam and it ends with a single dhamma. 
so a shari'u wasi'un wa tawilun so this is the, the we're going from a definite word to an indefinite word so that marks the shift from the subject to the predicate al mubtada in arabic to the al khabar in arabic and that's where we're going to put our is so al shari'u the street is because we're now moving from definite to indefinite wasi'un wide and tawilun long in effect, some people might say that this is a shari'u wasi'un, and the word marks a second sentence where the subject is missing, but it should have said a shari'u tawilun. So that that's if you want uh, perfection there. But I think this analysis will be fine. This, so let's translate that, put that in the right order. The street is a wide, but cross off the A because we don't use that in, in English, and A long. In other words, the street is wide and long. That brings us there to the end of this short lesson.